I think that we have to find a middle ground here because we do all these things to save money and we ignore time or we do all these things to to save time and we ignore the money aspect and this channel is the unicorn that helps you do both hey everyone i hope you're having a really good day today i'm going to be answering your most asked grocery savings questions. I made a similar video a year ago, but I figure everyone's life has changed in a year. Why not revisit the topic? I went to Instagram. I asked if y'all had questions. You did. And I'm going to answer them today. But first, if you're new around here, hello, my name is Lydia Sin. My voice doesn't usually sound like this. I have a sinus infection. And we are a debt-free family of six. I make videos on frugal and simple living, and I want to teach you how to have an amazing life on a slim budget. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. We talk all things time management, money management, and just having an abundance of joy. I'm just gonna jump in and answer your questions. Groceries are a tricky thing, right? We all have different needs. We all live in different places, which is gonna greatly impact how much we pay for groceries. The cost of living of where you live impacts how much a gallon of milk and a bag of apples costs. We also have different dietary needs, food preferences, families, lifestyles, food ideologies, the list can go on and on. So we can't compare grocery budgets because we don't all live the exact same life in the exact same house on the exact same paycheck. And so it's easy to look at what one family does and think that you're not doing enough. You need to do what works for you. You need to do what helps your family be fed, be nourished, and hopefully save money along the way. So these tips are meant to inspire and empower, not to make you feel bad, okay? I just wanna get that out of the way. Also, groceries are one of those things that you have a little bit of control over. You can't control how much your water authority charges per gallon or how much your taxes are going to be or how much the electric company charges you per kilowatt hour, but you can control your groceries. You can control how much food you waste, cooking from home, all of those things. So let's jump in. All right, so my first question is, which grocery store coupon slash cashbacks app, cashback apps are worth it? So I like two apps primarily. Those are Fetch and Ibotta. And the way I use them is I make my list and I do my shopping first, and then I scan my receipts second. So you can earn points or you can, in the case of Ibotta, you get cash back that is given to you via PayPal or a gift card. And with Fetch, you earn points that you can cash in for gift cards. But you can, with Ibotta, stack those with some coupon deals and end up getting things for free throughout the week. So check those out. I'll leave link below, links below, and then I have a, an entire video on how those work for you. Ways to save money on snacks. Now this is one that I got a lot. Someone else said, I love my kids being independent, but individually wrapped snacks are so expensive. And it's so easy for my kids to go and grab their own snacks, but those boxed snacks add up. So my tip for that is to put your kids on a schedule, three meals a day, and then my kids get two snacks. And those snacks are at 10.30 in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon. And I give them a few options. I have things in the bottom of the refrigerator that they can go and grab, like some yogurt and some cheese sticks. The fruit bowl is on the counter. We have peanut butter crackers. So you know what your kids' preferences are. And if they're, my, my kids range in age from nine, seven, three, and one. He's actually four. The day that you're watching this, he will be four. So obviously with the babies, I'm doing things like pouring applesauce into bowls, whereas my older kids can do that for themselves. But we get two snacks a day and that's it. And I'll give them a few options of what those are. And I really like Kids Eat in Color. You can follow her on Instagram and TikTok. She's gonna be on my podcast, I'm so excited. She is a registered dietitian and she talks about this, that parents decide when mealtimes are and what's going to be served and you give your kids options and then your kids decide, like in a mealtime, how much of it they're gonna eat. And in the case of a snack, like these are your options, these are the times that we've set, 
if they're hungry outside of that, it's either because they're going through a growth spurt, which is natural, or they're eating out of boredom. And so that's something that you're gonna have to talk through with your child. Is couponing worth the time? Well, extreme couponing has made a resurgence. There are lots of people who are out there showing you how they save a ton of money with their coupons. I only use digital. I do not have time to clip. I do not have time to hunt them down. I mean, you really have to be into it if you're gonna take the amount of time it takes for some of these people. I personally just don't think it's worth it. Um, you know, I'm a working mom and my time is very precious and if I'm not using it to take care of my family and my home or make money, I'm, I'm not gonna waste it. So personally, no, um, but if you can find digital deals, like at the store where you're shopping or like I talked about with Avada and Fetch, that's one thing, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time clipping coupons. How do you save on produce? It's our biggest grocery expense. Okay, so before you grocery shop, open up that sales flyer if it came in the mail or go to your grocery store's website and look at their sales flyer and pick your produce based on what is on sale that week. Um, those prices do greatly fluctuate based on uh, what's in season. I know now there are no real seasons in the grocery store because so many things are imported, but you will still find deals on you know, citrus in the winter, and berries in the summer and that first step is to just make sure that you're getting the best price second and I've talked about them <laughs> three times already but Abada often does do fresh grocery coupons so they'll have like 50 cents off a bag of apples or 50 cents off a bag of carrots or 50 cents off a bag salad and it's generic like it's just a generic coupon so make sure that you're utilizing that and then my number one tip is just to make sure that you're not wasting it. So take some time to pull those grapes off the stem, chop some vegetables, chop some fruit, uh, wash your berries, have things ready to go. So that way things aren't getting shoved to the back of the refrigerator and you're wasting them. Because if you're spending a lot of money on produce, but you're eating all of the produce, you're not wasting your money. You used it up. It costs what it costs. And that's unfortunate that grocery costs are on the rise. But if it's not getting thrown away, it's not being wasted. So it's not money wasted, but just make sure it's getting used. How many times per month do you grocery shop and do you hit up multiple stores for deals? We grocery shop every week and we don't go to multiple stores for deals. We do go to multiple stores only because we do the bulk of our shopping at Sam's and then we go to our local Piggly Wiggly and we pick up things like milk. And like if I need a thing of coconut milk or coffee creamer, so like smaller things that we don't want to necessarily buy in bulk. So that's the only reason. Um, and it's on the way home. So it's not like it's out of the way. Um, but I don't go to multiple stores to get multiple deals, which was a question somebody asked. Should you go to multiple stores to save money? And personally, how much does that save you? Unless it is saving you hundreds of dollars a month. I don't see how driving to multiple stores would be worth it because your time is also worth something. I think that I think that we have to find a middle ground here because we do all these things to save money and we ignore time or we do all these things to to save time and we ignore the money aspect and this channel is the unicorn that helps you do both. Um, so meal plan and do what you need to do to save money up front so that you're not having to chase down deals at multiple grocery stores. Best way to save for your husband's lunch at work. Well, my husband takes leftovers and that's a great way to save. We did the math and he was spending at least $2,000 per year on lunch. And that was on the low end of the spectrum. It adds up really, really fast. So he takes leftovers almost every day unless he's traveling or unless he's gonna be gone during his lunch time. And then sometimes he'll take like sandwich stuff with him. But the way that we handle that is when it's time to eat, you know, we've cooked dinner, I go ahead and portion it out or he portions it out for the next day and then we eat dinner. So it's already set aside and ready to go. And then he just warms up at, at work and that's it. Just leftovers. Save a bunch of money and you're not throwing food away. I don't know why I had someone say like, I just can't stomach leftovers. It grosses me out. 
That is like literally burning money in your front yard when you throw food away. You don't have to eat it for every meal. You don't have to eat something for dinner and then eat it for lunch the next day. You can save it and eat it a couple days later, but don't throw your food away. Easy way to save money that most people don't realize. Chop your lost leaders. Um, and what that is, is your grocery store has put things on special because it's either going to expire in the next few months slash weeks or they have bought too much of it. And so they have to get rid of it and they're going to sell it at what is literally a loss for the grocery store and you can get a really good deal on some everyday items and they go in cycles so that's the thing here is you really need to know what your sales cycle is if your family eats a lot of pasta and pasta sauce know when that's going to be on sale if your family eats a lot of cereal look at those sales flyers and track when it is on sale and that way you know when to go out and get the best price on the things that you actually need. How much do you budget and does that include eating out? So like I said at the beginning of the video, everyone's grocery budget is going to be different. We do get takeout every Friday and coffee every Friday and we don't include that in our grocery budget. That's a separate eating out budget, um, but that's only eating out one meal a week and I look forward to it because I mean, I don't have to cook. Um, because I actually don't enjoy cooking. I do it because, I mean, I got all these kids and they didn't insist on eating. Grocery budget now is $150 per week for all six of us, which comes out to be about $600 a month, which is $100 per person. Um, and that includes just groceries. That does not include diapers um, or anything. It, it includes cleaning products, toilet paper, and groceries cat food, that sort of thing goes in there too, but not diapers. Should I go over budget on things that are on sale so I can stock up? No, don't do that. Instead, work that into your budget. So if you know that canned vegetables or some frozen foods, because March is National Frozen Food Month, and you know that your frozen foods are going to be on sale, work that into the budget. So set like $10, $15 aside to stock up, but don't go over budget just because it's a deal. Because then it's not a deal. If it's caused you to go over budget, it's no longer a deal. So work it into your budget or maybe take money from another category this month if you see that things are at a stock up price, but don't go over just that. How do you make sure you don't make too much? I'm assuming you mean how do you know you don't make too much food it's not with six people that is no longer a problem but we do freeze a lot of our leftovers and so I try once a month to fill the freezer so I will freeze anything left over I will double a recipe and by double I mean bulk it up with some extras not actually physically double the recipe um, and I'll like, talk about that in a second but I'll double that recipe and freeze it. And then once a month, I don't have to cook because I just pull stuff out of the freezer and heat it up. So a lot of it gets frozen, so it's not wasted. So let's talk about doubling a recipe. So for example, I made chicken soup. It's a chicken and rice soup. I make the rice separately and serve it over the rice because rice in soup, you don't want to freeze that. You can freeze rice separately. I don't know if you knew that. You can make some rice put it in a plastic Ziploc bag, make it flat and freeze it, and then you just throw it in the microwave when you want to heat it up, or throw it in your oven with a little sprinkle of water over it, you're good to go. Google how to freeze rice, I swear. I made that chicken soup, and I didn't fully double the recipe. I just added in extra celery and extra carrots, and it made this huge pot. It's so good, I made it in a slow cooker recipe video um, and then I just froze half of it or I make chili and I put in extra beans and extra mushrooms and extra tomatoes and I freeze it I made Indian butter chicken and I just put in extra cauliflower and then I was able to freeze it so it bulks it up because you're not necessarily doubling the recipe but you're adding things to make the recipe more dense please share a budget-friendly toddler meal idea so our toddler eats what we eat um, we eat as a family, and 
whatever we're eating, I just put a little bit on their plate and then you always have a safe food. And that safe food is just something you know they're gonna like. And this is particularly important when you're trying a new food. So if I've given my baby Brussels sprouts for the first time and I'm not sure how she's gonna react, I make sure that I have broccoli and blueberries or applesauce on her plate because I know those are things that she likes. So I don't really do toddler food. I will sometimes make her just like an open face peanut butter sandwich and cut it up. I'm sorry my phone keeps stinging. I do not know what's going on today. It's super annoying. But I don't have toddler meals because our toddlers just eat what we eat. How do you not get burnt out on cooking? So like I talked about, we fill the freezer once a month so that once a month I don't have to cook basically and I get a week off. Second, I make sure that I am I really only shoot for three nights a week where I'm cooking and then one night a week we eat out and then one night my husband like on weekends he'll grill something and then we eat leftovers. But just because I cooked it on Monday doesn't mean it's the leftovers for Tuesday. I may cook like a pan of chicken and vegetables on Monday. Tuesday we'll have tacos. Wednesday we'll have those leftovers. Or I'll take those leftovers and I'll make a chicken pot pie out of them. So something like really quick where most of it's already prepared. I do get burned out. And that's why I pull from my freezer. Um, tips for lazy non-planners. You are not lazy. You're not lazy, you're busy. Lazy is a construct. But um, if you're busy, just use some things that you can fall back on where you have components of quick and easy meals that you can pull together. Um, have theme nights. So have like Taco Tuesday and you're going to have soup in the crock pot every Wednesday. Like have some things that are kind of autopilot for your brain and you just plug and play. Is it better to shop more often or less often? I shop every two weeks and we run out of food. I think you answered your own question. I wouldn't say that shopping more or less often is better or worse than the other. We all have a different life. And if you're shopping every two weeks, but you're running out of groceries, you either need to shop more often or buy more groceries when you do shop. And honestly, shopping more frequently means you're going to pick up on those deals. And I think you're more likely to buy foods that you actually want to eat. But if you're shopping every two weeks and you're running out of food, you've answered your question, you probably need to shop more frequently. A lot of this is troubleshooting, looking at what works and figuring out how to make it work, figuring out, okay, th this lump of clay is what I have to work with. How can I turn it into what I want it to be? Is the Misfits Market Box worth it? And can you opt out of certain items? We have allergies. Okay, so we did Misfits Market for a while. I may pick it back up soon. I may not. I don't know. Um, I'm happy with what our grocery routine is right now, but I enjoyed it at the time. And if you don't know what it is, this is not sponsored, but they send you a box of ugly produce, or maybe they had too much produce. Maybe it's a little spotted. Maybe it just is oddly shaped. It's stuff that they're not going to sell in the grocery store. They get it wholesale and then you get it at a deep discount. For us, it did come out to be a little bit cheaper than the produce in our local grocery stores. At the time, you couldn't pick what you wanted, and now you can. So you have a menu, and you choose what you want for that week, and then they ship it to you. Sometimes you get really interesting things that you've never tried before. And sometimes, um, like one time I got a ton of cucumbers, and so I made fridge pickles, which my kids loved, a lot of fresh herbs. So if you're looking out to try new produce, things you've never tried before, Misfits Market might work for you. So this was a really interesting question. How do you stick to your meal plan? It sounds like a simple question, but we don't always want what we've planned for the week. It does sound like a really simple question, but I understand where you're coming from because I feel like there is a cycle that we get into because we know oh, shopping the sales means I'm going to save money, but we don't always want to eat the food that's on sale. Or we go into the grocery store and we think that we're magically going to become people that we're not. And we buy all this food that looks healthy and we get it home and we don't, we don't want to eat that. So my tip to you is also going to sound a really simplified, but it's this. Buy food you know you're going to like. Buy foods 
that your family typically eats. It's okay to try a new recipe. Try one new recipe in a week. Don't get on Pinterest and decide that you're gonna cook three new meals in one week and then be too exhausted to do it. Pick easy meals that you know your family likes. And there's no rule that says that you have to cook a full meal every night. If you wanna have sandwiches and carrot sticks and fruit for dinner, you wanna have scrambled eggs for dinner, do it. But by picking foods that you know your family traditionally eats, you're gonna not waste those foods. And so sit down and say, okay, everybody, give me five of your favorite meals. And then you write them all down. Now, realistically, you can't make your kid's favorite food every single night. The camera died. But if you have an idea of what those meals are, and you stick to something similar or something that you know your family's gonna wanna eat, then you're not gonna run into, well, I meal plan, but now we don't want that because you're cooking food that you wanna eat. I hope that made sense. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful for you. It's super long, so I'm gonna stop here so I don't have to edit for three hours. But leave me a question. Let me know what questions you have in regards to groceries or saving money. Also, let me know how you're doing. Um, how are things going this spring? I feel like the light is at the end of the tunnel. Maybe I'm foolishly optimistic, but I feel like oh, this has got to be over soon, right? I, I just feel hopeful. I didn't realize how affected I was by winter. And now that the days are longer and warmer, I just I feel so much better. So let me know how you were doing. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, and I'll see you soon.